Let's look at styles in Microsoft Word. When writing a thesis, which is a complex document with lots of headings, styles are really vital to making our lives easier and ultimately being able to produce a contents page at the click of a button. As you can see, I've already put down a few headings that I might want to use in my thesis. It's well worth checking with your department in advance the exact structure that your thesis should have. So let's take a look at how to apply styles and what all the fuss is about. On the Home tab, you can see that you have a lot of options for formatting your text and the font and for formatting your paragraphs. And there's this long section here called Styles. This Styles section, this Styles section is all about offering you quick and easy ways to format the same tier of heading throughout your document. So, for example, something like an abstract, which would be a high tiered heading within your document that is unlikely to have a subtitle, but could have a subtitle, you would class that as a heading one, a top level, a top tier heading. You would also want to do this for something like a list of contents. So you can either highlight the section of text, the line of text that you want to become a heading, or you can simply click on that line and then anything within that line or paragraph will become the same heading tier as the one that you then select. As you can see, all of these headings very quickly become heading one simply by me clicking on them, on the word, on the line, and then clicking on heading one. You can also see that the spaces between each heading changed immediately as I clicked heading one. So it's really worth being aware that the spaces between each line are altered by each of these settings that you give them. You can always hover over different heading styles to see what they look like. So what is the fuss all about? Immediately on the left, you can see that as I was clicking heading one, for each of these headings, these top tier headings, a navigation pane appeared and you can see that actually each of these heading ones have become an easily navigable area within the document. Simply by clicking on each one, you can quickly jump to that section of text. Obviously, it's less impressive when it's on the same page, but you can see why this would make a big difference over a large document. This is also where the information for your table of contents will come from at the very end of the document when we insert an automatic table of contents. Under our abstract, let's insert some text so we can see what this will look like. As you can see, this text here is a little bit different. This automatically comes under this normal setting. It's worth remembering that all text within your document does come under a style. Normal text written and inserted will automatically be under the normal style. We can change these styles however we'd like. So the normal style can be changed. All styles can be modified to your preference and also to the university guidelines. There are a couple of ways of changing and modifying styles. The quickest and perhaps simplest way of modifying a style is by selecting text within that style and changing it up here. If we edit it and perhaps make it Times New Roman, which is of course a classic font for use in professional theses and professional documents. We could change the size of the font if we wanted to, but we're not going to on this occasion. And then if you right click on the normal, on the styles pane, if you right click, you can then update normal to match selection. That means that all future writing where you apply this style will be the same as what we've just updated it to look at. If we update normal to match selection, that means that all future text that comes under the normal style will look the way that we have just changed it to look. So now let's insert some text under the preface and then simply by clicking this style on each line or by highlighting multiple lines at once, we can easily apply that normal style to the text. This is a real time saver as you go along through your thesis and makes it all look uniform and very professional and easy to read. 
So doing it this way is really great if you just want to quickly change the font size of your styles. If you want to do something a little more complex, however, you're going to need to do this a different way. Simply by right clicking your style in the style pane, you can click on this modify option. So right click and click on modify. That brings up this pane, which gives you so much more in the way of options for your headings and styles. So as you can see, I can now change the style that this is based on. So if I change to heading two as a style, you can see that it will automatically default to the font that is in heading two. So you can easily base one style on another, depending on what your quickest way to get to the right font or the right style or the right spacing is. So think about that as you go along. So let's keep this style based on normal because we do want it to be Times New Roman. Because it's a heading one, because it's a top tier heading, we do probably want it to be a little bit bigger than the rest of the text. So let's leave it at, at size 16. We can change the font color if we'd like, but black is generally a very professional color and is a very accessible color, generally speaking. So it's probably worth keeping it black as well. It's really a style preference, but remember to consider what will actually look the most professional at the end of your thesis. These things could all have been changed using the first method of style modification that I showed you. So let's look at what this menu really offers us. In this bottom left hand box, there's a little down arrow. So let's have a look at what this arrow reveals. It looks like now we can change quite a few more things than we could before. Depending on your thesis, these may or may not be useful to you. The most useful tool to use when formatting your headings and styles is this paragraph option. If you click on the paragraph dot dot dot, you'll see that you can change things like your alignment, your indentation, and one thing that you will definitely want to consider is the spacing. So let's have a little look at what we can do for before and after each line. As you can see, by increasing these values, you can dramatically increase the space before and after your heading or your line. It's really useful to bear in mind that general university guidelines do say that you want multiple line spacing. You are likely to want to have at least double line spacing for your thesis. If not double, then you'll want multiple. If you have multiple, you can either change it to things like 2.5, and then you can see what that would look like, or you can change it to a whole number. This is a useful option to know about if you want a very specific distance between each line. However, because this is a heading, let's keep the line spacing to single and simply keep a greater distance before the paragraph, before you press enter and after you press enter. So before the line and after the line. Okay. So let's click OK for that. Now you can see that for every heading one, there is automatically a little bit more padding, a little bit more space before and after the heading. Ensuring that you have the right amount of space before and after each heading and before and after each line will really increase the legibility of your document and how professional it looks. Once again, it really is very important that you check your department's specific guidelines on font, font size, line spacing and all of that sort of thing that you can edit and alter easily and quickly in your styles pane. To create a new style, click on the horizontal line and down arrow on the bottom right of the styles pane and click on the create a style. This is a useful menu because you can see all the styles available to you, either that Microsoft Word offered you to begin with or that you have then created. So hopefully now you can see the value in styles and how it is actually really quite easy to modify them to your specific preferences and your department's guidelines. Don't forget to look at things like subheadings. So the subheading comes under a lower tier than heading one. So that might be a heading two and test out how your navigation pane reacts. So for example, if I put this as subheading example, you can see that in the navigation pane, this then becomes a separate heading, which is 
beneath the acknowledgements heading within that tier system that we've been talking about and see how far down you can go or how far down it might be useful for you to go because remembering that this is ultimately going to affect our contents page at the end these are things that are really useful to play around with now and to get really confident in using because it will save us time so try to make sure that your headings are more uniform than mine are here uh, and make sure that it looks nice and professional. Thank you for watching.